Hi, this is Mitch Doan, and along with Jamie Richardson, we're your hosts of the Breakthrough Active podcast. We aim to deep dive into health and fitness that will help bring you a better understanding of topics that are of interest to you and can help you on your own journey. If you are enjoying the episodes, we'd love for you to leave us a rating on the platform you listen to your podcasts. Enough from me, sit back, relax, and enjoy the episode. And welcome back again to the Breakthrough Active Podcast. My name is Mitch. I am your host. We are here on the last day of the financial year, uh, June the 30th, and I hope I'm not the only one in saying where has the last six months gone. Unbelievable. It happens every year and it just seems to fly on by and all of a sudden we're halfway through the year. We are halfway to 2023. Incredible. Uh, Okay, so enough uh, moaning and groaning from me. I wanted to talk today about macros and macronutrients again. So last few days we've spoke about uh, macros in general. Then yesterday spoke about the pros or the benefits or reasons to be tracking your macros. So if you haven't listened to that one, make sure you go back and listen to it. Because today we're going to be at the other end of the spectrum, spectrum and going to be talking about the challenges and the reasons uh, not to track your macros. So whenever we do, uh, whenever we do talk about specific things in relation to uh, some that may be popular in the health and fitness industry at the moment, so topics of conversation, points of emphasis, schools of thought, I always like to give both sides, um, both sides to it. So I'm not just preaching one side or preaching the other side, I use my opinions and try to be as neutral as possible so you guys will be well guided and well educated enough to make your own decision so that's why i thought it was very important that i cover both sides of it like i mentioned yesterday spoke about the reasons or the pros uh, to tracking macros and today at the other end and the opposite end of the spectrum going to be talking about the challenges and reasons not to tracking macros so uh, first of all, I think the the number one thing to, to look at here is that you are always going to be needing to weigh and measure your food. So unless you are someone that eats everything out of a packet and you are able just to scan a barcode or plug in the numbers on the back of the packet, you are going to need to be weighing and measuring your food, which means you're going to need a set of scales that are quite precise and you're going to need to weigh all your raw food before you cook it and go through that process every time you have something to eat or even if you're having something to drink like a coffee or something you need to obviously weigh and measure your milk and honey or sugar or whatever you put in there too so at first thought it can feel as though it might be quite simple you just throw something on the the scales and weigh it then you you know you move on with cooking it or you move on with eating it but for anyone who has done this and anyone who has done this for an extended period of time knows that it can get old quite quickly you pretty much using the scales every couple of hours and weighing it to, to the gram and documenting the weight of that, plugging it into MyFitnessPal or whatever app you use. But it is quite a quite the process that can get old quite quickly. And just know that if you are someone wanting to, or if you are someone who is tracking their macros, you will need to do this because for it to be the most effective and for you to get out of it what you're hoping to get out of it, you're going to need to be really precise with your numbers and meticulous with the weighing and measurement of all your food and everything you put in your gob. So just know that you will need a good set of scales. Make sure you've got batteries uh, for, for those if they ever run out and you will need to be using that multiple times a day. Uh, number two, which is also a really important point, it, it is going to be near impossible for you to track your macros and count all your macros when you are out. So when you're in the confines of your own home, it's a very controlled environment and it's going to be a lot easier for you to keep track of these things. Yeah, obviously, it still has its challenges, like I mentioned just, just now, regarding measuring and weighing your food, but it's going to be a lot easier when you have uh, that at your disposal and you know what you're cooking. When you step out of the house and you are eating out, all of that goes away and becomes increasingly difficult. You know, there are some restaurants and some cafes and places where it does actually have the nutritional value either on their, their website or, or even I have seen it on menus before. So if you are you know, being 
thorough with your weighing and measuring, you can actually use those numbers just off the website and plug them in. That's obviously gonna make things a lot easier, but for the most part, there is gonna be no way for you to be able to track and measure because you don't know, neither does the restaurant, neither does the chef who makes the food. They don't know how many calories, how many grams of fat, how many grams of protein, how many grams of carbs are in each thing that you eat. So use scrambled eggs as an example. When you make them at home, you can measure how many eggs you use, you can measure how much milk you use. If you add cheese, you can measure that. You can use a you know, certain amount of oil or spray. And then you're going to have a really good idea of a very close approximation of how much, uh, how many calories and, and fats and proteins and carbs are in, in that serving. The moment you go to a cafe and you have it there, it all goes out the window because you might know how many eggs are in there. The, the chef would know that and often that's on the menu, but you don't know what they cook it in. You don't know how much oil they cook it in. You don't know how much butter they add or how much milk they add or how much cheese they add. If you're having it with, with toast and it's sourdough, you don't know how heavy the bread is and how much that weighs. If it comes with avocado and sides, you don't know what that is in terms of the weight or some sort of sauce. That's when it gets really challenging when you don't know what type of sauce is or how much they use. So you can guesstimate the best you can, but you are still probably going to be several hundred calories out and several you know, tens of grams out with in regards to the carbs, fats, and proteins. So you can take a take a guess, but it is going to be you know borderline impossible. And and if it doesn't have uh, the measurements and the uh, nutritional value of the foods, it's going to it is going to be impossible for you to track it as closely as you need to for it to be effective. Um, number three, you start to view food as a number instead of what the food actually is. So I have seen this happen before. I have been uh, guilty of this at times in my life when I've been tracking macros and, and I know friends and family and, and people, you know, clients and members in the gym um, over the years that have done this. And instead of looking down and seeing a serving of rice, you look down and you see 50 grams of carbs. Instead of seeing a piece of steak, you, you see that as 40 grams of fat and 40 grams of protein. So you, you start to look at the food and instead of looking at it as what it is and, and talking about the flavors and, and how it smells and the check, the textures, uh, you start looking at it as numbers. And, and it can start to take the joy out of eating and that might sound really ridiculous, but it's true. And a lot of people who have been uh, I guess borderline obsessive with tracking their macros and, and doing this for an extended period of time. It really can take all the fun out of you know having nice meals because you're no longer looking at the food as what it is, you're starting to look at it as numbers. And it's almost to the point where you're seeing the food as a means to an end uh, instead of what it is you know, on your plate and, and enjoying the meal, especially if you are, you know, with family or friends and having a bit of an occasion, it can start to play mind tricks on you. Um, so that is one that I am very adamant uh, about that, that will happen if you do look at it for a period of time. And just be mindful that that uh, is likely to happen to you if you do it for an extended period of time. So be mindful because we, we should be celebrating food. I feel like, you know, it is a is one of the things that we do get to enjoy every day. And if we start to look at it as a number, not as the food, it can take you down a bit of a spiral. Um, next one, uh, the quality of the food can diminish. So when you're tracking macros, you're not looking at micronutrients as much as you're looking at the macronutrients. And most of the time, you're not looking at micronutrients at all. So you're looking at foods with how much you know protein, fat and carbs they have, and in turn, how many calories, but you're not taking into consideration how much sodium it has, how much vitamin C it has, uh, how much potassium, how much calcium, how much vitamin B12. So you're not really looking at foods in, it, in their entirety and you're simply eating foods based off the macronutrients. So quite often if you are eating good quality food, you do get a lot of those micronutrients anyway. But there is an argument that if you are doing, if it fits your macros, which is a bit of a term that they've coined, I-I-F-Y-M, for anyone who may have seen that um, you know, online or anywhere, if it fits your macros, you are not considering any of those micronutrients. And, and to use an example, there are occasions when a meat pie it has the same macronutrients as a chicken sandwich with avocado, will have the same amount of protein, same amount of fat, same amount of carbs, 
and it doesn't take a genius to to figure out what uh, what is going to be more nutrient dense, dense and where you're going to get more of your micro nutrients and more of your vitamins and minerals. So just be aware of that. That obviously part of the benefit of doing if it fits your macros is the flexibility. But when that flexibility leads to you jeopardizing your micro intake and your vitamin intake, it can start to you know bear itself on your health. And that's when you often will start to see deficiencies in certain nutrients. You might have to start to supplement that um, as opposed to going back to the, the main source of what the issue is and it's just the quality of your food. And, and, and quite often vegetables go to the back seat. They don't often, they don't offer as much benefit for your macronutrients, but again, you're going to be hard pressed to find anyone to say that vegetables aren't aren't healthy and don't have a place in in most people's nutrition. Uh, And the last one is it can become obsessive. So this this is one for, for any nutrition approach really, but when you are looking at numbers and when you're weighing your food and and you're having to be really meticulous with that, it can become obsessive to the point where you aren't wanting to go out and and eat in public or with friends or at a restaurant because you can't track your macros specifically. You can't weigh and measure your food. You don't know exactly what's in it because like I mentioned earlier, you're viewing it as a number instead of the food. So that's where it can get to the point where you are changing some of the other parts of your life for the worst, your, your social situations, your, your relationships, you know, things that you do on the weekend, they're all going to be impacted because you aren't wanting to put yourself into the situation where you aren't able to control what you're eating. And, and I've seen this plenty of times with, with people in, in my network where they'll go out for dinner and this is no joke they will actually bring their own food in a tupperware container and ask uh, ask the staff to heat up their food and then they eat their food at the table instead of having a meal with everyone else and i've seen that happen more than once so it gets to the point where you do feel you feel like you are lacking that control to be able to have what you eat to the point where you just don't want to do it at all so Definitely a huge negative there. And one of the things when you are looking at health, I mean, physical health obviously is a big part of it. Weight, you know, the weight that you are and looking to to drop body fat and build lean muscle, but at what cost? And if you are giving up some of your relationships and giving up some of the social things you enjoy, then in my opinion, it's simply not worth it. Um, Okay, lots uh, lots to unpack there, but hope if you made it all the way through, you got some value out of it. And uh, as always, thanks for listening and I'll see you. Thank you for listening. I hope you enjoyed the episode. If there is a topic you'd like us to discuss that we haven't already, please make sure you reach out in Facebook Messenger and we'll do our best to cover it in the upcoming episodes. For those of you enjoying the podcast, we'd love for you to like, subscribe and leave us a rating. It really helps us grow and spread the good word. Hoping you're all having a great day and we'll be sure to see you on the next one.